going on everybody welcome back to another episode of homes hobbies motor control it's your boy josh aka coleman chilling like a villain man i'm in the studio hanging out trying to get some work in while my little man's asleep and uh basically this is what i decided we're gonna do today a while back we had started on the um um the kind of get back to basics theme a little bit we got that uh axial sex 10 2 xj bone stock installed a brxl installed a trailmaster sport a 35 turn motor um a top hat and we never really got to do much with it and then we started using a different vehicle and going out on the trails completely just shifted direction and a couple of reasons for that one was i just needed to get outside i was freaking out i've been in this house too much um second thing was uh, i was also building that little tj at the same time and i really wanted to test it out so figure kill two birds one stone um but we're back in the studio and once again some things have changed um that xj that i was going to use as the test platform has now become a platform for a Axial Fest build. And uh, yeah, it's probably gonna get an anti spur swap and a bunch of other things. So, not gonna use that as the rental. I want the rental to be a factory gearing setup. That way, you guys can really get an idea of what these motor and ESC combinations do without me playing with gearing. So, um, that being said, instead, I have a different truck. Uh, I went and picked up an Axial SCX10 Trail Honcho, brand new bone stock. Pulled it out of the box, um, and I've been playing with it for a while now. And basically, what I decided to do is uh, I put on some smaller wheels and tires. Uh, well, same size wheels, smaller tires. Um, did a few body mods, and I'm going to continue to do that. But I'm going to try to keep the factory trail honcho body and look and all of that while making it perform a little better, making it... Um, look a little better and you know just try to do a little esp to it so that being said let's head on over to the uh workbench and i'll show you what we've got going on all right you guys here they are here's the new honcho this thing's actually pretty slick man and we will go over all of the cool little things i've done and we'll could be doing to this in the future um here shortly not on this episode obviously we'll do it on like a camping and camping with coleman episode but for now this is the uh xj that we were messing with before and some of you guys will remember because it still has the uh brxl sitting here brand new brxl looking all purdy and way too clean with a uh trailmaster sport and there's a 35 turn trailmaster sport with the top hat installed so um nice little combination very potent very uh uh you know affordable it is definitely affordable but it's also got a lot of bang for the buck so um that's a great way to get into this stuff especially if we want to get into the homes hobbies line but i think for this what we're going to do is we're actually going to step up from that motor into a different one now I, i'm not 100 percent sure we'll know by the end of this episode obviously um i might just run that one for a little while before we do this but what i really want to run is this this is my torque master sport 540 27 turn brushed motor and um you, i don't think you can get these anymore i'm pretty sure you can't get these unless you like custom order them or you're on like the team or something i don't really know but i've got one and i would really like to put it to use um from my understanding this motor for the torque master series is really good it's a three slot motor right it's not the five slot so it, you know this isn't like showing off the max capability of what homes hobbies can do i mean obviously their five slot motors are going to be way better on startup but i believe that uh out of the torque master lineup which is their three slot lineup um this is one of the slowest motors in that lineup and uh at least well not it's it's down there it's down there it's like the equivalent of like a, a 1800 or 2200 kv motor so it's definitely down there it's not the slowest but it's definitely down there and um at 27 turn it's just not what you would expect from a 27 turn at least that's my understanding so i would really like to put this to use and uh i think i might just do that i don't know we'll see anyways uh let's get started all right so the first thing we need to do is uh get the electronics out of the uh, other chassis so we'll set this aside and um this is kind of crazy because i feel like i just installed all of this stuff and now i'm taking it all back out and honestly i think we're just going to take the esc uh to save time because i i, I just i really think i'm going to wind up using this motor i just want to see what it can do all right 
Boom. Unhooked. Now we can move these wires. Got them kind of just tucked down in here. There we go. Disconnect one, disconnect two, and the ESC is now removed. That did not take too long at all. Now, we can figure out, do I want to pull that motor out too? I feel like I should pull the motor out and we should run it just based off the fact that uh, I had already installed it. Maybe we can install this afterwards and see how it does. Let's just set it aside for now. Let's think a little bit more. Thankfully, all this stuff comes apart pretty easy. Now we've got the motor screws out. We've got the pinion gear off. We can uh, work on getting this motor out. Now, uh, if I recall, it was in there pretty good, but it looks like I left these screws out. I had to remove these screws last time in order to get the motor in. So, and if I flex it out enough, maybe it'll just pop out. There we go. Yep, we're good. Motor's out. I kind of scratched it a little bit, but that's all right. It's a Holmes Hobbies motor. It's tough. <laughs> all right. So now let's figure out what do we want to install in the trail honcho. All right. Now I gotta take the body off this bad boy, and we can go ahead and get this all installed. Let's do it. All right, so there we go. We've got the body off. You can uh, see the layout there, bone stuck. Let's go ahead and remove these old electronics. You can see there's a little bit of dust and grime in there. It's definitely, uh, it's definitely been used quite a bit at this point. I mean, I've been taking this thing out and having fun with it. So yeah, let's go ahead and let's get some goods in there. There we have it. Motor is out. Now we can pull this ESC out of here, which I just realized it's going to cost me my lights, but you know what? At the end of the day, that's okay. We've always got the ability to add more lights. All right. There she is. Axial AE5L ESC removed. Removed. Now, what we're going to wind up installing this bad boy beautiful brxl the torque master is a beast now let's go ahead and reinstall this trail master sport and uh let's try to get the most out of this bad boy now what i've noticed is that with this hi-hat installed this is legitimately hitting the corner of the battery tray and causing a problem now there is a shorter battery tray i could run but uh i don't want to go through all that mess so instead what we're going to do is take a uh, set of snips here and just cut the corner of this right off of here if we can. And there you can see I just snipped the corner of it off and it actually works out okay. So, nice. Let's keep going. Now just like I showed you guys in the other video, I like to do my meshing by feel and sound. So I use my fingers and I hold one gear still, usually the pinion gear, and I take the spur gear and I wiggle it back and forth and push them together until they are just barely able to move. Perfect, right there. Then you gotta be careful when you tighten it because when you tighten it, it could and most likely will move it just a little bit. So I tighten one screw down, check it again, still good. Then I tighten the other screw down. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily mean this is the right way to do it, it's just how I do it. All 
I don't know if you guys can hear that. It's an audible tick from the mesh, the, the amount of space there is, the gap there. Sorry about that guys, apparently I had it zoomed in and out of focus for a whole section there, but I got the uh, motor back in, I got the uh, pinion gear back on there, I got it meshed up properly, and now we are just connecting the uh, motor wires back, back together, and we should be almost ready to go. We just gotta throw the uh, cover on the receiver box and do something about these uh, now defunct uh, light wires here because we don't have any way to control those anymore. That's something I do want to do just to avoid having an issue like I've had in the past is we're going to take a little bit of utter butter just a little something I like to do and I put it on the inside just around where the uh, wires come in there I even try to poke some into it and lubricate the inside of that a little bit and then I put a little bit on the outside as well not a lot just a little bit does not take much and all that does is just create a little extra layer of protection to help keep water from being able to push or seep inside that a little bit on the top there and uh... you know while we're at it we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna put a little bit on the seal here as well this is just where the screws are I'm not putting all that on there I just it's easier when I have a bunch do put a little extra where the screw holes are just because all right well it's all installed it's actually looking pretty good here um, I'm gonna leave these wires here just in case I get another axial light controller to run them if not uh, I'll probably pull them and because I got yeah, I got some upgrades coming for this thing. So anyways, uh, let's get this back together and test it and just make sure that it works. All right, you guys, this bad boy is up and running again, man. Look at it, back together. So at this point, I guess we should probably test it and make sure it functions. Um, I'll go ahead and plug it in. We'll turn on the old radio here. Boom. And uh, I doubt I can do this one handed. Let's set this down. Let's go ahead and get it plugged in. Should be plenty of battery left. All right. Now comes the moment of truth. We've got steering. Oh, shoot backwards backwards and we can't reverse it on here can we no we can't reverse it on here let's try to reverse the motor wires real quick and see what that does all right so now let's see what happens haha we are in business. Let's make sure we don't have only 75% forward and 100% reverse, because that would be a bummer. Nope, it's how it's supposed to be. Looks like we've got full speed forward and 75 reverse. So, definitely sounds a little bit different but I like it. So let's take it out in the backyard and uh, let's just test it out real quick on the course. Of course the course is still uh, destroyed but um, it's a little better than it has been recently. So let's take it out and go to test. Let's just dive right on into it and see how she does. Get a little one hand action here. This is also my first time. Oh look at that bug. Going for it. He's like riding it like a wheel. It is a wheel, but he's riding it like a... That's just too cool. Get off my wheel. 
There we go. All right, so let's uh, this let's just go ahead and test this up. This uh, also my first time running it with these wheels and tires outside. So and with this new body height, so it's, a, it's the whole thing's a little bit different. So far, I actually like it. it looks good. It feels good. Definitely nice and controlled. Definitely not as much clearance as what I had with those big old factory tires, but honestly, I think this looks a thousand times better. Yeah, oh, look at that low speed control. That's what I'm really after is the low speed control. I'm sure I could grab it right now and get it to do some nice bunny hopping, but that's not really what I'm after. This is nice. The trail honcho is a really capable rig, just right out the box. I'm really liking it with this setup. worked I didn't think these tires would do very good on the rocks because of these big old lugs and the tread pattern that it has but honestly this is doing really well um, I think it's doing better than the factory tire and wheel combination the input the throttle input is very nice with this motor too it definitely feels more torquey um, like there's not, I don't know, not as much high end. Even though we're not hitting the throttle, I can just feel like the resistance on the trigger is definitely different. So, this is a little tricky. I usually eat it right here. Like Inho, yep. At least it didn't go all the way over. Yeah, it's sweet. 
All right, you guys. I'm gonna have to call it. I think it's uh, I think it's a mission accomplished. So you already know what it is. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys out on the trails. Piece of chicken grease. Yeah.